Hey everyone, Paul Hernandez here, and I'm excited to be joined by an absolute force in the hip hop community. His work has been featured everywhere from the Smithsonian to video game covers, and he's worked with everyone from Marvel to Hasbro, and now of course, Sideshow. Please welcome in Mike Thompson. How you doing, man? Hey, thanks for having me, man. I'm very happy to be here. It's good to see you, man. Seriously, it's uh, it's a pleasure to have you. I know you're incredibly busy, so we won't take up too much of your time. So if you're cool with it, we'd like to get right into it and Absolutely. talk about uh, two things mm -hmm. that I think mean a lot to you, hip hop and superheroes. Like, why do you think that hip hop and superheroes are so closely related, especially now? You know, the the music and, and comic books, they, they kind of are intertwined. I think that that group that enjoys one kind of enjoys the other. Uh, a lot of these rappers are big comic book fans. And, um, you know, the one thing that uh, they kind of have in common is the whole secret identity aspect, right? So you have someone <clears throat> like uh, Peter Parker, who by day is out taking pictures and really low key and a, a bit of a nerd or whatever. And then at night he's saving the city yeah. and fighting crime and all that. And you can kind of say the same thing about these rappers, you know what I mean? Like they may be mm -hmm. uh, introverted in their regular lives and quiet um, and then they get on stage and just tear it up with their alter ego. Did you all, like, have you just been a hip hop head your whole life or uh, did that sort of develop, you know, or did you have an influence? And then that same question, but to superheroes and comic books. Sure, sure, sure. So like, I've, I've been a big hip hop fan for a long time, but it, it's, it's interesting because I kind of grew up as a military brat, you know, traveling around, mm -hmm. um, you know, Germany and, and back and forth between there and here. And uh, I didn't really know what was what was really popular when I was when I was real young, you know, like in uh, elementary school and, and junior high, things like that. So I got exposed to it a little bit later. But when I when I did right, right. get on board, I was like I was all in, you know. So I, I okay. quickly got an education on you know who was big and what the lyrics were and all that because it was it was just so dope to me and so new. Um, so I've been listening to music, uh, hardcore. I went to college. I kind of have like a, a soundtrack for my life that I can I can kind of think back on. You know, what I was listening oh, okay. to. Yeah, man. What I was listening to when my when my kids were like going to you know to to you know, preschool and I had to play the um, what was I listening to um, uh, the Chronic instrumental version. I bought that. Cause I was oh, like, the, okay. I was like, the chronic is so dope, but I don't want my kids listening to these lyrics. So I would have like the inter <laughs> yeah, instrumental yeah. version. I'd play that, you know, when I was in high school, I <laughs> That's was playing, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you know, I had, I had public enemy on blast when I was in high school. I mean, a uh, college rather with, uh, with my, my Walkman on and, uh, it would, it was the kind that it would get to the end of the tape and automatically flip over and play the other direction. So I could hear the B side through the A side because I played it so much. So, you know, it was a it oh, was a big, good. a big influence um, for the music. Same goes for comics, you right, know, like right. when I was little, uh, I would get good grades in school and my dad would bring home comic books. So, you know, his thing was he he wanted to expose me to all the people I like, and then he also wanted to introduce, you know, heroes that I might not see that were important for me to see. Right, so right. he'd bring home like Captain America and Black Falcon, right? He used to be Black Falcon back in the day. Mm. People don't know. Right. Um, but uh, you know, or Luke Cage and Iron Man or Iron Fist rather. And uh, yeah. and so I would see these heroes and I'd be like, oh man, I want to be like these guys. So I think there was important uh, role models for me. Obviously, I don't have bulletproof mm -hmm. skin. But uh, you know, dude was was awesome, and uh, and I wanted to be like him. Uh, so that right, was right. that's how I got it, uh, introduced to comic books. So you not only sculpted, but designed the ODB statue that we have. I mean, what what draws you to ODB specifically? Like, what was it about ODB that made you want to not only design and sculpt? But, you know, what would you say is like, a, a, what, how does he influence you? The thing about ODB that I think I'm, I, I'm drawn to the most is his personality. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, he, he had skills as a, as a rapper and he could sing and, you know, all that. But he was kind of the person that I wanted to be when I was growing up as far as 
having just being comfortable in your own skin, right? Like being very much right. um, an extrovert and uh, not being afraid of what people think. And just he was the guy that I feel like he would walk in a room and that's when the party started. When I heard, you know, originally um, you guys had me do the portrait. And when I heard I could do the statue too, I was just so excited because there were so many possibilities there um, to bring to it. And, uh, and then when you gave me a little more uh, control as far as the, uh, the composition goes, like I was on cloud nine, you know what I mean? <laughs> how would you feel, like, how do you feel like, you, did you put like your influence and like how he made you feel into that statue specifically or did you want to be more objective? I listen to who I'm drawing or painting or sculpting. And so right. I had OBB playing, I was, you know, watching his videos on YouTube, and then I was figuring out how I wanted to do it. And I knew that um, also I was watching the Wu-Tang American Saga on Hulu and oh, was just like Hulu. so hyped. So good. I was just like, oh my yeah, gosh. So the, good. So the, the, the actor that's playing him it's just like, I think he was channeling, you know what I mean? So yeah, I sure. I was watching that as well, and, and that gave me all the inspiration I needed to, to just um, go, mm -hmm. go crazy on that piece. If you look at the piece, like I have him stepping out of the subway, and you know, he's cracking right. the concrete with his Timberland, and dragging the dragging the gate from the <laughs> from the Brooklyn Zoo, and that's how like between that and the fact that he's kind of pushing past the uh, the the light post and it's bending underneath of his hand, right. like for me, ODB, mm -hmm. when he would pick up the mic, he was kind of like Neo in the Matrix, like everything kind of bends around him. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So that's why I wanted that piece to feel like that, and I tried as as hard as I could to kind of get that to convey. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely the one, like for sure. If we're talking like Neo, he's definitely right. the one. Right, right. Um, yeah, and I love that, and I loved uh, specifically on on the ODB piece, right? Like the proportions mm -hmm. and the perspective that you put on him, because it feels like like an album cover for me. Yep. And um, so you not only did you know the, the the statue for us, but you worked on ODB with us. Um, or in collaboration with us, I should say, in 2D and 3D. So, I mean, when when doing that, is your process the same, Mike? Like, is do you have the same level of, do you find the same influences when working on a 2D, like, ODB piece versus this 3D piece that you just worked on? Yeah. Same type of influences, obviously, right? So I, I, I'm looking right. at as much reference as I can to, to just make sure that I am, um, you know, getting, being, being, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Being respectful of you know him and mm, the foundation and all of that because I really wanted that to come across uh, first and foremost since um, you know Sideshow did work with the ODB Foundation. Um, you know, so right. that was that was kind of the main thing um, when it came to um, the painting. A um, I, I like to call it like a upscale grimy, right? So. You know, okay. when, yeah, yeah. when you look at the skyline, it's it's very, between that and the bridge and, and, and everything, it's very much, you know, sepias, browns, very kind of like mm -hmm. dirty, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, a little on the it's, nose, it's, it's, it's like real, right, yeah, yeah, to yeah, what yeah. that area may be like. Right, right, right. So, okay. so that's that. And then he's standing there, and then in the lights and the sky, that's supposed to feel, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit like, so if you're looking at the skyline, actually, like that's baby, come on, right? And you look up in the sky, and that's ghetto superstar. So that's kind of where <laughs> right, I was okay. going with that, you know. That's cool. And yeah, then that's cool. the the composition of him, it all comes back to me kind of relating comic books to everything I do. So the mm -hmm. the composition for him, I wanted him to, you know, you're a little lower than he is. You're looking up at him. He's looking down, and then everything yeah. is all around to feel dynamic, and that's what I wanted for him. Whether it's a painting or a sculpture, uh, like I said, it, it's going to have a it's going to have sensibilities of something that might be relatable to a comic book. So dynamic lighting, dynamic pose, dynamic perspective. Um, that's the thing that I always try to go for, and I think that that right. makes whatever you do more interesting. So 
that's what I hope that you would see in, in, in my stuff. And with the ODB especially, that's also stylized, right? So does it look mm -hmm. exactly like ODB? No, but that was a choice that I didn't want it to look, right. you know, just like him. I wanted it to feel like something that could be animated that's stepping off the page mm -hmm. and now or the screen or whatever and now you have this thing in your house where there's this forced perspective of the the bridge and, and and you can actually look down into him coming up the stairs out of the subway which is kind of a fake on you know actually having a whole nother floor below him right there's so much of his music so much so many iconic tracks that he has like what were yeah. you listening to specifically when doing the 2d and the 3d piece um, a lot of Brooklyn Zoo, a lot of Damage, uh, Protect Your Neck, yeah. um, you know, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I loop those a lot, in addition to like songs with uh, all of Wu-Tang, and, and then I just wait for his part or whatever, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I find song. it's funny, like I'll find something that resonates with me, and I'll just kind of put it on a loop and listen to it. And I'm just like in that zone and I, and, and I can just work that way. So that's what I did. You also did, uh, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was so cool to kind of show your range. You did the Ahsoka Tano versus Darth Maul diorama that yeah. we did um, with them fighting. You got the Mandalorian throwing back. Like you sculpted that. It's kinetic, man. There's so much movement in that. Like what were you, what was your headspace going into that? What were you listening or watching and reading? So for that one, I went back and uh, rewatched Phantom Menace. I'll, it's, it's, it's funny with me. So I'm a giant Star Wars fan. Uh, since I was a kid, I saw right. the, and this is gonna date me, but I saw the original Star Wars in the theater like seven times. <laughs> Um, and my family did not love the idea of taking me to the uh, to the theater seven times at full price to see the movie, but I but I watched it. Always loved Star Wars, comic books, books, movie, whatever. I watched the prequels. There were scenes in them that I keep going back to over and over and over again. And for Phantom of Menace, yeah. Darth Maul stole the show, like bar none. Yeah, that was my guy. Yeah, um, I I can I was kind of befuddled at how they're gonna kill him off in the first episode of, of like and you introduce him cut him in half and I'm like no don't do that yeah yeah so so when they brought him back I was happy <laughs> but um, but course. yeah so watch that a lot and um, obviously um, watch the Clone Wars the thing about it is like if I'm being 100% honest I wasn't a giant Clone Wars fan until the last season but I started right, watching yeah. it and watched those last four episodes. And to me, those last four episodes mm -hmm. were more powerful than many of the movies, like live action movies that I've seen. Of course, yeah. So that scene, when I saw it, funny story, I called up Matt at Sideshow and was like, hey, have you seen this yet? He's like, no, what are you talking about? I said, what are you doing right now? He's like, oh, I'm watching my kids. I was like, okay, give them something to do. Go watch these four episodes. <laughs> You're gonna thank me later. Watch these episodes, and he's like, "It's like that." I said, "Yeah, oh. man, go watch them." So he watched the uh, thing, and like a few weeks later, I got a call. He's like, "Hey, I watched the Clone Wars." I was like, "Yeah, what'd you think?" He goes, "It was dope. It was dope." And then, <laughs> and then I said, "Yeah." He goes, "How'd you like to sculpt it for us?" I was like, "What? Are you for real?" Let's go. He's like, "Yeah, why don't you sculpt it for us?" I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah. So yeah, of course. Was, so bucket list. Check. Star Wars? Sideshow? What? Done. So, very happy with that. Done. Yeah. I mean, and dude, you, you can tell. Like, you can feel energy in that piece. Like, everything from the way that the sabers are moving, mm -hmm. and then, like, you captured Maul, like, in his rage, and you captured Ahsoka. Thanks, So, man. like, you can tell Thank that, you. like, you can feel, like, your excitement in that piece. And I love it. And, again, we, we took it to Comic-Con, and people... Loved it. Awesome. And uh, awesome. it was, yeah, it was, it was such a killer piece, man. Thanks, I mean, bro. again, you're so, you've done, you've done so many different things. Again, we just, we just sort of traversed through your, your love of hip hop, comic books, and, and of course now Star Wars. Um, but you know, we gotta, I gotta bring it back to hip hop. I mean, okay. I've gotta ask. Do you listen to any like modern hip hop? So I do. Um, I, 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 I usually listen to it when I'm with my kids, like my kids are, it's funny because I've kind of become that, you know, uh, you kids stay off my lawn type of old dude when it comes to music, <laughs> you know? I remember going on a trip to the beach with my with my uh, kids and they had uh, Nicki Minaj playing and I was like, 
what is going on right now? I'm like, what is, like I, I feel so old. Like, why is she saying this out loud? And you're like, oh, come on, Dad. So, um, so. But I'm, she made it into one of your cards. She made it into the Smithsonian, asked me to paint Nicki Minaj. Like, she, she, thanks, she Stranger sure Things. Yeah, Stranger <laughs> Things have, 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 have never happened. So, um, so I, uh, yeah, no, I'm a 90s, early 2000s hip hop guy. Right, right. Um, I mean, I, I awesome. appreciate what people are doing. Obviously, I work with Kanye. Uh, um, uh, actually worked with him on the Jesus Walks video, um, uh, painting the, the, it flashes up on one of the versions. There's a, a painting of um, like a Sistine Chapel type of thing. And that's what I did with him. Right, right. So got to that's meet awesome. him and hang awesome. out with him in common in the Sony studios in New York one day, giant common fan. And so, oh, um, yeah. you know, that's kind of more my genre. Um, I uh, I was just in LA for uh, for a business trip and they were playing. They were like, Mike, what do you want to listen to? And I was like, uh, put on EPMD. So what you saying? And they they had that on. And if you don't know that song, put that song on. You will be banging your head until you have a headache because it's like that. Okay. But uh, but yeah. So uh, you know, I listen to everything. Um, but I really lately have been doing a lot of. Uh, listening to to Jay Dilla, uh, I love Slum Village. I love okay. I love Dilla. Ooh, he yes. was he was amazing, and uh, and MF Doom as well. You know, I started oh, an yeah, MF yeah. Doom sculpture a while ago that I need mm -hmm. to finish. But um, big fan of him. And right before I came in here, I was listening to uh, to the Danger Doom album because I'm a Adult Swim fan also. So you know, that's a great album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, an MF is like the MF is literally the perfect like. The like representation, right, of hip hop and yes, sir. and comic books. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I mean, you know, rest in peace, Doom. But I mean, it was such an incredible. That's such an incredible album. Such an like, and I I do I do like that. I mean, I listen to a lot of modern stuff as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I my uh, first. I, this is gonna date myself in a in a kind of a different way to show you the era that I grew up. Sure. But I remember the first time I listened to hip hop was my brother in law. Was listening, letting me listen into some like old, old, old Nelly. Okay. And it was what I wasn't <laughs> supposed to listen to. And it, was, and, it, and it was when he did, uh, it wasn't Country Grammar. Mm -hmm. It was like a little bit right after that. Okay. But it was when he did those two albums, Suit and Sweat. Mm -hmm. You remember when he did those? Yeah. He dropped those two albums like six months apart. And uh, my mom was not happy. So, <laughs> uh, but that's sort of like, and that was part of it too, right? Is like I wasn't supposed to be listening to it. And mm -hmm. so it was uh, it, a lot of that drew in for me. But <laughs> So I have, I have a question for you before we get out of here. And I know you're on the West All Coast. Right. Were you born on the West Coast? Always lived there? I was. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So, West Coast, Dirty South, East Coast rap. Mm -hmm. Which one? You gotta. You gotta. You gotta pick one. It's a. It's a Sophie's choice. Uh, well, I mean, so a lot of my modern uh, love now, right, is more like, like Cole. Kendrick, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that that I'm listening to. And those are very different, like, you know, Cole's whole East Coast, Kendrick's on the West Coast. But I mean, just West Coast, like, just growing up listening to, okay. uh, like, Pac, and yeah. I still listen to Kendrick. Sure. And I'm also from here. I can't I, I, I can't think, get run out of town, it was man. A test. It was a test. <laughs> I wanted to see if you'd give the right answer. That's that's right for you. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I've got loyalty, man. I got loyalty. I still got to walk these streets. So, um, all right, Mike, you're a busy man. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. We seriously... Appreciate it. And we love working with you. We can't wait to work with you again, man. Nice. Thank you. Thank, thank you so same. much for being here. Uh, <clears throat> hope you have a great week. And thank you for admitting that the West Coast does have, uh, is the best coast. <laughs> um, I think we'll, 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 we'll I remember <laughs> saying that part. I, don't, I know it's oh, a, we'll, it's we'll a, add it's a good post. post. Yeah, yeah. That's It's definitely a good yeah, post. Yeah, we'll add it in post. <laughs> Uh, all right, Mike, thank you so much for being here. And before we let you go, man, where can people find uh, you know more of you and more of your work? Absolutely. So if you go to my Linktree, which is just linktree.com slash Mike T, like Tango, Artworks, uh, you're going to see my socials, you're going to see my uh, anti-venom awesome. uh, tutorial and all of my mentoring and all that stuff. As well as website again, sideshow.com, Mike T Artworks .com. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Thank you all so much. Protect your neck, and don't forget to let your geek side show. Nice. Thanks, Bye, Paul. everyone. Thank you.